Today's topic is photonic switching applications in data centers and cloud computing networks. If you look at what's happening in data centers and networks globally, basically what we're seeing is that video and cloud computing are driving an explosion in network growth and server deployments. According to Bernstein Research, between 2009 and 2010, for example, the large mega data centers, for instance, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, etc., experienced 100% growth in their server spending. So basically tremendous growth in server capacity and server numbers. And this in turn is driving tremendous growth and complexity in data centers. So let's have a look at photonic switching and how it can be used within data centers and between data centers to actually improve performance and to scale um, to support this rapid growth. So first of all, there's an overall issue of managing the complexity and growth in very large data centers. Uh, the picture here shows a QTS data center in Georgia and you can see that this is a, a fairly massive facility but even so it's still not really one of the very big data centers. This one is about 300,000 square feet and um, today we're seeing data centers up to a million square feet and potentially beyond. So in these large data centers the physical and virtual resources and the data flows are becoming extremely complex, basically um, too complex for humans to negotiate. So network intelligence to analyze and optimize the flows in these large networks is becoming necessary. Photonic switching uh, enables a fully automated, dynamically reconfigurable, highly scalable physical layer. And this, uh, this enables these very, very large data center networks. So on the one hand, it can allow these networks to scale from 10 to 40 or 100 gigabits and potentially beyond to support rapid growth in servers and also um, upgrades of interfaces on servers and top of rack switches. Uh, it also allows the whole network, the physical network, to be reconfigured based on a number of different factors. So for instance, it could be an instantaneous demand, it could be cyclical patterns through, throughout a day or a month, or it could potentially even be predictive network traffic algorithms that can predict when certain loads uh, need to be switched around within the data center. It also enables a range of disaster recovery responses that are not really available in a manually switched network. Now there's two main areas that we should look at in looking at the applications for photonic switching in data centers. The first one is within the data center or the intra-data center. Now what you'll see depicted in this slide is a fairly typical multi-layered data center architecture. So on the lower level what we see there is top of rack switches and below those will be basically banks of servers. Uh, the top of rack switches are interconnected to an intermediate cluster aggregation layer which is typically a layer 2 layer in the network and then to a data center aggregation layer at the top which then, correct, then connects into the metro or wide area networks. So what we're seeing is that the growth in the server deployments that we talked about a minute ago is actually uh, resulting in huge amounts of traffic within the data center. So uh, the combination of, those, uh, of the server growth together with the growth of rich media and just the the very complex computational tasks that are required means that the bandwidth is first of all increasing two to four times per year, but importantly up to 75% of that bandwidth is actually within the data center running east-west. Um, and also the top of rack interfaces um, at the server aggregation layer are rapidly scaling to 10 gigabits, uh, 40 gigabits, and potentially even to 100 gigabits. So there's a tremendous growth in this part of the network. So what does that mean? What it means is that this cluster aggregation layer, which is that traditional switching layer, uh, has limited ability to scale for the, the massive growth that we're talking about. So this part of the network is experiencing increased latency, uh, because it has fixed topologies, it's not future-proof, it's not easy to upgrade, um, and basically it's not matching pace with the enhancements in servers and just the basic growth in servers that we talked about. Um, also, 
what our customers are telling us is that they're typically having to plan to, to upgrade or replace this part of the network every 9 to 12 months and that basically becomes prohibitive uh, from a cost perspective. Overall what this means is that those expensive server resources that we talked about um, are not being effectively utilized so the investment that's gone into those server uh, resources is not effectively utilized because of the high amount of latency in the network. So there are some things happening uh, to solve that. First of all, convergence within the data, cent data center networks is happening now. So if we look at that traditional architecture again, let's take a look at what's actually happening. So the first thing is that the servers themselves are getting much more powerful. Uh, so we're seeing multiple uh, blade servers within each rack and multiple racks uh, connecting up to top of rack switches. The second thing is that some of the traditional top of rack functionality uh, is actually moving into the servers themselves. And thirdly, um, and very importantly, this uh, cluster aggregation layer that we highlighted as a problem area before um, is converging to some extent into the top of rack switches. So what we're seeing here is a, a very much a flattening of this network architecture. Now what's needed to actually enable this um, is a low latency scalable network of connections between clusters. So how do we do that? The answer is photonic switching. Putting a photo photonic switching fabric in place enables a solution which allows every top of rack switch to connect directly to any other top of rack switch in the data center. Uh, it also allows direct optical paths from top of racks to the data center aggregation layer. This uh, results in a lot of simplification in the network. So first of all, the, the server capacity within the data center can be reconfigured either on demand or in a cyclical way, uh, for instance in a follow the sun kind of scenario. Um, also for schedule maintenance or disaster recovery, uh, server resources can be moved around uh, to support that. So overall this allows for very, very effective uh, utilization of resources within a big data center. And finally, uh, one of the big things is just the future-proofness of this bandwidth. So because, it's a, because this photonic switching layer is in a sense transparent to, um, to protocols and also to speed, it allows you to scale from 10 to 40 to 100 gigabits and potentially beyond. Uh, in this uh, switching part of the network without having to replace the network as is the case today. So there's, uh, there's a tremendous amount of cost savings there over time. And finally, um, and very importantly, it results, in a, it results in a switching layer which has extremely low latency and that's very important uh, to be able to support the utilization of these very, very expensive server resources that are being deployed. Let's now quickly take a look at the situation between data centers. And um, the big value add here is really maximizing the performance of cloud computing. So the first aspect is resource optimization. So being able to reconfigure resources uh, between data centers and being able to support dynamic network optimization between data centers uh, depending on various network traffic demands. So for instance, in a content distribution network, you may need to push more bandwidth to a certain data center at a different time of day. So uh, photonic switching gives you the capability to do that without necessarily having to rely on a network operator to do that. It also provides extremely low latency transit between the different nodes of data centers. Uh, from a management and monitoring perspective, photonic switching can add a lot of value to a cloud network. So first of all, it provides automated local and remote fiber management. So that means that you don't need to send humans into the facilities. So a lot of these facilities can be left completely unmanned um, and operated remotely and the, the fiber network can be reconfigured as needed. Secondly, uh, the inherent optical power monitoring that Calient uses in its photonic switches means that you can actually monitor the health of your network within and between the data centers very simply. So this means a very rapid response to a number of failure scenarios um, including bad connectors, patch cords, 
and other equipment that's actually in between. And finally, from a disaster recovery perspective, photonic switching gives you a lot of options. So to be able to recover from, for instance, a storage uh, or a server outage, um, things that are beyond the scope of a simple fiber cut that would be, would be covered by uh, the main backbone infrastructure, for instance. So the photonic switch gives you a lot of flexibility in how you actually respond to a disaster recovery situation and can result in a lot of savings. Let's look at a quick example of this. So in this network what we show here is that there's a number of data centers and at a normal time of day there's, da there's traffic passing between all the different nodes of the data centers as we show with the different um, red, green, and, um, and purple colors here. Uh, but as an example, let's say at a certain time of day, uh, the data center up the top, headquarters data center, needs to move a lot more bandwidth than usual down to the data center two on the lower left. And this may be something that just needs to happen for a couple of minutes or an hour. It's really, it's really up to the data center operator to determine how long they need that for. So um, the, the problem is that f the, the ad drop multiplexes, which are typically part of the carrier networks that, that a data center operator would lease, are not necessarily built today to provide on-demand reconfiguration, or at least not from an end user perspective. Um, and so being able to manage that from an end user perspective can be quite complex. Having a photonic switching network in place gives the data center operator um, a means to actually reconfigure that capacity themselves. So let's look at that. Uh, so the, the solution in this particular case where we want to get more bandwidth from headquarters to data center 2, uh, you'll see that what we're going to do is the path that's in green between data center 1 and data center 2 we're basically going to take that away and reroute that bandwidth so that all of the data is coming from the headquarters data center down to data center 2. And we'll see that now. So the, um, the, the traffic that is going from headquarters to data center 1 is basically looped. That capacity is looped and then sent down to data center 2. So that means now that all of the capacity is between uh, the headquarters data center and data center 2 at the expense of data center 1. So this is a very, very simplest, simplistic example. In actual fact, uh, you would only ever probably take part of that bandwidth. It wouldn't be complete, uh, but, it, but it shows at, at a very high level what's possible. And this, um, this solution could be applied to any of the paths within this, within this uh, multi-data center architecture. So this gives a, a data center operator tremendous flexibility to scale uh, the bandwidth and resources between sites to support uh, different loads on the network in different parts of the world uh, at different times of day and also to respond to different disaster recovery scenarios as we mentioned before. Finally, power consumption in data centers is becoming a huge issue. And this is because of the size of the data centers and the switching speeds. And so um, the energy consumption of uh, an all optical switch versus uh, a pure electrical switch or a hybrid optical electrical optical switch um, is, is at least an order of magnitude different. And this means that deploying an all optical switching fabric can result in uh, significantly less energy consumption within a large data center and therefore some, some uh, very significant cost savings in, um, in power consumption. So to summarize, just looking at the drivers again, what we're seeing is that cloud-based video and rich media are driving rapid growth in data center deployments, uh, in traffic within the data centers themselves, and also between data centers in cloud computing networks. Photonic switching offers some great benefits uh, with these kinds of networks. So first of all, it provides scalable, future-proof networking within and between data centers. Um, it maximizes cloud performance by being able to reallocate res uh, resources between data centers at different times of day or on demand or cyclical patterns, whatever is needed to optimize that network. It supports the, uh, the management of growth and complexity in mega data centers. 
uh, reduced network cost and power consumption due to the inherently low power consumption of uh, all optical switching and also the relatively low cost per port of all optical switches versus traditional kinds of switches. And finally, it provides automated fiber monitoring and this uh, adds some tremendous value in terms of being able to fault isolate at any part of the optical networking within, within or between the data centers.